So guys, what is up? I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving with you, your family, your friends. You guys ate good if you celebrated Thanksgiving. And I am here to, today to do chapter 81 of Kaitikyo Hitman Reborn. And just before that, I want to say I got this at Anime NYC. I was so surprised because, you know, not a lot of Kaitikyo Goods is there, okay, and let alone cosplayers. I was fortunate enough to see two. I, I did not get to see the Mukuro and, and, and um, Hibari cosplay, but I did see a Reborn and, and um, Suna cosplay, which I was so happy about. And then I got this. I got the Bunko of Ring, okay? So I have two Bunko Rings, too, okay? So um, that I'm excited about. <laughs> okay, Kiss Ring, Kiss Ring. Kiss the ring, yeah, kiss the ring. So, um, this chapter marks the end of the Kyoko arc. Okay, it was, I, I think, from chapter 62, so less than 20 chapters. But of course, this is the first major arc of the entire series. We have like four more or five more after this is the Vary arc, then the Tenya. Within the Tenya arc is the Choice arc then the inheritance arc and the rainbow arc so yes five more arcs five more major arcs to go and you know the completion of the entire series so going back from chapter 80 after defeating mukuro and everything you know suna did outclass him he did basically purify mukuro's aura because mukuro did use the state of humans the strongest state uh the strongest path but still that was nothing compared to suna's new overwhelming power which is the hyper dying will mode which is different from the dying will mode because everything is more internalized versus external and so so forth so you could go back to watch that video where i did explain a bit more and like i said this is the end of the arc so mukuro's defeated everybody is defeated okay suna is the only one standing um and we have while he's down Somehow, Ken and Chikusa, because now Mukuro's done, um, done for the count, everybody who was under possession of Mukuro is no longer under possession. So we have where Ken and Chikusa have regained consciousness. And Suna's wondering, is Mukuro still alive and everything? Of course he is. And they're telling him, don't go near him. We don't want no filthy mafia people to go near him. And this is where they go into a little background story about themselves and Mukuro and how they came to be. So remember when Mukuro shot himself with the possession bullet, he come, him, Chikusa, and Ken come from the Estrano family who created it. And at first when they're telling about like, you know, with the possession bullet throughout the entire mafia world, the possession bullet is labeled as being, um, we call it, um, um, Wait, they, they blocked it or something of that. What was that word that they call? Forbidden. They called it forbidden. And that was not always the case. The reason why they did that is because once it was known that it was created to, you know, take over people completely and everything, they were hunted down and they were killed. And they just, you know, went about probably spreading this rumor that this bullet is not to be used by anybody because of how how dangerous it is compared to any other special bullet that has been made known so far throughout the story. So they were a big family at first, but because they created this specialized bullet and basically the family was hunted down to very little people, what they did was to regain back their glory, they started experimenting on the children, the young people within that group okay so if they make them stronger and also also with the possession bullet and they they do this they can somehow be able to get back to that high ranking status that they used to have before basically their purge okay so that's where their hatred for the mafia stands because within their own group where they were supposed to be safe where they were supposed to have their sanctuary they turn their backs on them and use them like guinea pigs. They use them as experiments. So you saw, and this is where it was very dark 
in Kaito Kyo. There are many dark moments in Kaito Kyo and this is just one of many. There was also obviously Mukuro plucking out his own eye, people getting beat up, Gokudera getting the needles in his chest. This is just one of many. So you clearly saw where Chikusa was getting experimented on. You saw children dying. Okay, left him, they got shot at, they were burning alive. Um, uh, we had where Ken, he was on an operating table and they were operating to give him, cause you know, he changes uh, tea cartridges to channel different animals and use their characteristics and strengths, right? You saw that happening to him. And I, I think they did show something about uh, Chikusa and everything. But then you get into this next panel, which is very horrific is showing a small Mukuro standing amongst multiple dead corpses around him. The entire operating room is bloody because when that's happening, that happened like probably in a room across from where uh, Ken was getting operated on. And him and Chikusa are seeing where this one kid is just killing off everybody all the scientists or whoever is trying to experiment on them and then he turns around and he's like okay we're going to just you know cause hell and hurt the people who hurt us hence why it goes on further to where uh mukuro decided to join the family that uh lancy was at and then you know he did you know you know took over his mind and go on so forth so this thing has pa been happening since they were young children now imagine the people that was supposed to be taking care of you your caregivers people who you look up to who you loved cared about turns around and decides that you're only good if i make you into what i want they do horrendous acts to poor children just so they can get back to higher standing hence why these three in particular has such a deep hatred for the mafia world. And I get that, you know, they're hurt and everything, but to go out and then target other kids who probably don't really want to be in this, but they have to, aka Suna. And, you know, this whole thing just comes full circle. And it, it, it really does hurt you a lot to know that, like, out all the characters in this entire series um Mukuro was the one that had the most tragic backstory out of a lot of the characters another character would be Zanza's but like Mukuro had the worst backstory in the entire Kaitakyo Him Everborn series to me personally this this dude was he was a guinea pig him Shikusa and Ken they were guinea pigs and that's how he got his um uh, six path of reincarnation eye because he was experimented on okay imagine he was originally a happy-go-lucky kid and then they do he's under the knife without anesthesia you could just imagine it. you saw the aftermath of what happened when he snapped okay and this and now we have this Mukuro he does get better in the story obviously he does he does eventually become I'll, I'll just give it this he does become an ally but from where he started to later, yeah, yeah, you really do feel sorry for Mukuro and and the others who are involved. So, um, you know, that's happening. They're explaining, and of course, uh, Reborn did manage to call the Vongola medical team, so they are coming to get everybody to get patched up to better, and they did manage to find the antidote for for Lancia because remember he was poisoned and everything then out of nowhere <laughs> out of the shadows Chen and Chikusa get chained by their neck okay and then the Avengers come and no that's what the uh, Bendis translated from Italian to English is called Avengers so I'm gonna call them the Avengers <laughs> okay they come out of the woodworks they come out of the shadows and they are basically the underworld judges of the mafia okay so any heinous crime because there are laws within the mafia world okay even though they are not like the laws that we abide to um outside of their world uh there are rules and regulations and laws and anyhow you break any of those rules any of those laws you literally have the vendis aka the avengers coming after you 
and these guys do not play around. They are very terrifying. Like they're cloak looking late, like they're from the 1600s. Okay, they're a mysterious group who, like I said, they pass judgment. They're the ones who make the call. And anyhow, within the mafia world, which is, you know, people do die, people are betrayed, stabbed in the back, you know, it's the underworld, okay, of society. And they're the ones that says, you break our rules and we're coming after you. We're going to be knocking at your door and we will drag you out by the neck. And that's what they did to Chikusa, Ken, and, and um, Mukuro, and even Lancia. Okay, and my, some people might say, why Lancia? He was the one that was tricked. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't think they really care about that. Again, he probably did break some laws, aka killing other mafia members and organizations and everything. Even if he was under the control of somebody else, he still did it. So he's also in trouble with them. Okay, and before Suna can try and go and question him, we have where Reborn is telling Suna, you do not want to mess with these people. Okay, they they are the enforcers. You don't you don't mess with the law. You don't. Because these guys are hidden in mystery. These guys are trouble. If you cause trouble, trouble will come looking for you. So it's just like you will see them again. You will see them again. And it does come to the arc. Uh, I believe it is the last two arcs of, of the series. They do, are explained more. So you will have to wait a while. But you will see these guys pop up every now and again. And it's just like, they're, they're so cool. <laughs> the Vendis is so cool. So mysterious. But you do not want to mess with them. So they do take them away. Okay. And everybody else is taken by the Vangola uh operation well not operation team but by the medical team to go and get patched up get better and everything and then Suna collapses due to the strain his body has gone under because remember this is a different type of power he's now dealing with so he's dealing basically with a lot of muscle pain to the point that it knocked him out made him unconscious and then we have where reborn is just like you know he finally goes to sleep too because all of this all of this tension since chapter 62 okay day in day out they had to go from everybody getting beat up people's teeth getting knocked out to going to heartland park to dealing with assassins to now dealing with mukuro and everything everything finally unwind everybody is tired and all we need is a nap now we do have a short time skip um, I do remember if I am correct and do remind me everything that happened with um, Mukuro and everything happened um, obviously a month before because they did state that especially with the fight with Yamamoto versus Ken okay he had like a month later which I believe it was the month of September baseball tournament okay so i'm guessing right now they did do the time skip one month later is when they had a uh, baseball tournament and obviously um namimori middle school has one it was a home home run that uh yamamoto did so the fight happened in the month of august and now we're in september okay everybody's okay everybody's doing good everyone is surrounded with each other they're all watching the game uh yamamoto play and obviously namamori has won and everybody's doing all their shenanigans and having fun just you know acting like their usual selves before everything that happened with the whole finasco of, of dealing with mukuro and his crew and soon as like reminiscing saying that everything that's happened feels like a dream then he gets a chill down his back and Suna only gets these type of chills when he feels that Mukuro is close by. And you're thinking, oh, now Mukuro wants round two? But I do have to tell you, not quite. He did possess a little kid to just keep a surveillance around, around uh, Suna. Mind you, he was arrested by the Vendis. And I'll just tell you guys, once you are arrested by them, you are put under heavy surveillance. And I think originally, before he, he remember, he, he, Chikusa, Ken, and a lot of them did break out of prison. I think they, I think it was the same Vendis or a different type of facility, mafia uh, prison facility they were under. They weren't quite arrested by the Vendis at the time. But now that they are, it's very hard to get out of, 
to get out from underneath their hands okay it's very hard to run away to escape because once they once they catch you by that neck once they have you in their in their grasp um you might as well stay there <laughs> you might as well stay there so for the time being yeah mukuro will just be possessing or taking over people just to keep an eye on suna because he still wants to take over the mafia uh take over suna's body and stuff so basically yeah guys this is the end of the kyoko arc and we are going to slowly start getting into the next major arc which is the vaya arc and um yeah these are this is where it starts coming in so if you guys are new to katekyo him and were born do tell me how you felt about the first major arc of the series uh many people were like no the daily no 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 daily life arc was just the daily life arc it originally reborn was never meant to be an action oriented series or anything until this arc so this is the first major one tell me how you felt about meeting mukuro Ken, Chikusa, all the people that Suna had to go up to. What do you feel? How do you feel about seeing this change of Suna's character? Like he started off very wimpy, and yes, he still is wimpy, but you you're clearly starting to see the changes very slowly with Suna's character and now the upgrade he's about to go through. Because from here on out, that's all you're gonna see for Suna's character. New upgrades, new power systems, all of this stuff, and him getting more into his leadership role to be the future Bongola 10th boss okay so yeah do tell me how you felt about this entire arc were you surprised by the shift from the daily life arc to the Kyoko arc what were some of your favorite characters what were your favorite moments if you watch the anime version how do you feel about the anime versus the manga if you saw both obviously those who have reread and rewatched the series how do you feel about this arc in particular what did it make you feel the first time and even right now drop all of your comments down below in the comment section i will love to read them and hopefully be able to respond to them the links are in the description box guys and i'm kimmy chan of anime legends and i will see you in the next arc bye